The year 1984 will forever stand out in history books thanks to the incredible book of the same name by George Orwell. The book 1984 was published back in 1949, just a few years after the Second World War. It reveals ways that society can be manipulated by mass surveillance with Big Brother or the eye in the sky ever watching, also by eliminating freedom of expression and by completely controlling the population, first by movement and then by thought. There is a famous quote from Oscar Wilde that states, Life imitates art far more than art imitates life. Could this be true in the case of 1984? That year came and went and everyone breathed a sigh of relief as it appeared the book was nothing more than science fiction and a figment of Orwell's imagination. However, fast forward 35 years or so and it could be seen that the book may possibly be described as prophetic. In the spirit world there is no timing and there is always a series of events that takes place before things come to fruition. Thankfully, we can now see that the book served as a warning. It was a wake-up call. People responded, united, played their part, and things went in a different direction. Freedoms were restored, justice was served, and as it says in the Desiderata, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. The year 1984 was in fact quite an eventful year and in some places a little volatile. The Cold War was in full swing and it seemed that not even a great sporting event such as the Olympics could unite the globe as 14 countries boycotted the games that were held in Los Angeles. The Winter Olympics earlier in the year held a different vibe with the unforgettable Bolero performance by Torval and Dean who skated their way to a record of 12 perfect sixes and a gold medal. It was a good year for travel. Joseph Kittinger became the first person to cross the Atlantic in a hot air balloon and astronauts on board the Challenger spacewalked without lifelines for the first time. The UK saw minor strikes and pit closures and an agreement was made to return Hong Kong to China in 1997. It was announced that the GCSE would be replacing O-levels and dog licences would be abolished and more evictions of peace protesters took place at Greenham Common. DNA fingerprinting was used for the first time. A retrovirus called HIV was found to be the cause of AIDS and crack cocaine became the number one drug of choice on the street in the USA. The world mourned the untimely death of Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and Motown legend Marvin Gaye. The UK lost three great comedians in Tommy Cooper, Eric Morecambe and Leonard Rossiter, as well as acting legends Richard Burton and Diana Dawes. In the world of entertainment, films such as Ghostbusters, Footloose, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and The Karate Kid had us queuing up at the cinemas and Alex Foley in the form of Eddie Murphy burst onto the screen in Beverly Hills Cop. Many notable songs were released in the music world, such as Brian Adams' Run To You, Laura Brannigan, Self Control, Matthew Wilder, Break My Stride, Jim Diamond, I Should Have Known Better, Jocelyn Brown, Somebody Else's Guy, and Bronski Beat, Small Town Boy. However, 1984 was dominated and owned by the Liverpool band Frankie Goes To Hollywood, their song, Relax, had been deemed too raunchy and was banned from being played by the BBC. Well, the best way of bringing attention to something is to silence, cancel or ban it. And within two weeks, Relax had taken the number one spot and the BBC could no longer ban it or ignore it. This paved the way for Two Tribes and The Power of Love. There are many songs by that name and they're all special in their own right but the combination of Holly Johnson's voice and the haunting lyrics makes this track stand out whilst delivering goosebumps, in my opinion. The passion can reduce you to tears if you feel the music with your heart. Please see the link below to listen to the track. It's highly recommended. 
1984 saw a harrowing documentary aired from Michael Burke about the famine in Ethiopia, which led to Bob Geldof and Midger putting together one of the greatest concerts ever in Live Aid. In a year dominated by HIV and AIDS, it seems fitting to attach a link below to Queen's performance at Live Aid with the unforgettable Freddie Mercury, who stole the stage. This great showman managed to unite and captivate an audience of 72,000 people within Wembley Stadium and a further 1 billion people around the world watching on TV. Thank you for the music and thank you for listening.